Greetings loved ones. Today we're going to talk about how you can prevent elderly abuse. Help us get these messages out. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell and please share these messages with others. So let's talk about preventing elderly abuse. Elder abuse is an intentional act or failure to act that causes or creates a risk of harm to an older adult. An older adult is someone who is aged 60 or older. This abuse occurs at the hands of a caregiver or a person whom the elder trusts. Common types of elder abuse include physical abuse, which is when an elder experiences illness, pain, injury, functional impairment, distress, or death as a result of the intentional use of physical force and it includes acts such as kicking, hitting, push, punching, pushing, slapping, burning. Then the sexual abuse which involves force or unwanted sexual interaction of any kind with an older adult. It may include unwanted sexual contact or penetration or non-contact such as sexual harassment. There is also emotional and psychological abuse which refers to verbal or non-verbal behaviors that inflict anguish, mental pain, fear, or distress on an older adult. Examples of this includes humiliation or disrespect, verbal and nonverbal threats, harassment, and geographic or interpersonal isolation. Then there's neglect, which is the failure to meet an older adult's basic needs. These needs include food, water, shelter, clothing, hygiene, and essential medical care. Financial abuse is the illegal, unauthorized, or improper use of an elder's money, benefits, belongings, property, or assets for the benefit of someone other than the older adult. How big is this problem? Elder abuse is a serious problem. The available information is an underestimate of the problem because the number of non-fatal injuries is limited to older adults who are treated in emergency departments. This information does not include those treated by other providers or those that do not need or do not seek treatment. I'll give you an example of this. Um, we're going to pause here for a second. Um, it could be like they go to one emergency room and then go to another emergency room so that they don't have um, a continued care for the doctors to see that there's a problem. Um, or maybe they don't take them for treatment. Additionally, Many cases are not reported because elders are afraid or unable to tell the police, friends, or family about the violence, and it could be shame. The victims, they have to decide whether to tell someone they're being hurt or continue being abused by someone they depend on or care for deeply. Elder abuse is, it's really common, and abuse including neglect and exploitation is experienced by about one in six people aged 60 and older. From 2002 to 2016, more than 643,000 older adults were treated in the emergency department for non-fatal injuries and assaults, and over 19,000 homicides occurred. Think about that. 19,000 homicides in 14 years. Some groups have higher rates of abuse than others. Compared with women, men had higher rates of both non-fatal assaults and homicides. The rate for non-fatal assaults increased by more than seven, increased by more than 75% among men, and more than 35% among women. The estimated homicide rate for elder men increased 70% from 2010 to 2016. Compared to non-Hispanic whites non-Hispanic black or African-American persons, non-Hispanic American Indian Alaska natives, and Hispanic or Latino persons, they have higher homicide rates for seniors. Overall, and firearm-specific older adult homicide rates increased between 2014 and 17. Of the 6,188 victims, 62% were male. <clears throat> The perpetrator was an intimate partner in 39% of firearm homicides and 12% of non-firearm homicides. Common contexts of firearm homicides were familial intimate partner problems, robbery burglary, argument, and illness related. For example, 
The homicide was perpetrated to end the suffering of an ill elderly victim. Both victim and perpetrator had an illness or the perpetrator had a mental illness. So what are the consequences? <clears throat> Elder abuse can have several physical and emotional effects on a senior. Victims are fearful and anxious. They may have problems with trust and they may be very wary of others. Many victims suffer physical injuries. Some are minor like cuts and scratches, bruises and welts. And others are more serious and can cause lasting disabilities. These include head injuries, broken bones, constant physical pain and soreness. Physical injuries can also lead to premature death and make existing health problems worse. So how can we prevent elder abuse? There are a number of factors that may increase or decrease the risk of perpetrating and or experiencing senior abuse. To prevent elder abuse, we must understand and address the factors that put people at risk or protect them from violence. Listen to older adults and their caregivers to understand their challenges and provide support. Report abuse or suspected abuse to local adult protective services, long care ombudsman or the police. Use the National Center on Elder Abuse listing of elder state abuse. And we have, um, you can go there to find your state's reporting numbers, government agencies, and you can also find uh, state laws and other resources. And we're going to include this link in the description of the video. You also need to educate yourself and others about how to recognize and report elder abuse. Learn how the signs of elder abuse differ from the normal aging process. And also check in on older adults who may have few friends and family members. You can provide overburdened caregivers with support such as help from friends, family, or local relief care groups, adult daycare programs, counseling, outlets intended to promote emotional well-being. Also, you can encourage and assist persons, either caregivers or the seniors, who are having problems with drug or alcohol abuse. You can help them get help. The older adult population is growing faster in the United States than younger populations. Many older adults require care and are vulnerable to violence perpetrated by a caregiver or somebody they trust. More research is needed to uncover the causes for and solutions to violence against seniors. According to the WHO, one in six seniors above 60 years of age will experience abuse. The question is not if you'll encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is, what will you do when you do encounter them? You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice. Those who suffer violence, they need to know that those who love them and those who don't even know them will reach out and help them before it's too late. Help us get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell. And please share these messages with others. You could save a life. If you're a victim, please listen to me. I really, really want you to know that you're valued. You are loved. You are intelligent. And yes, you are worthy. God doesn't want you to suffer from violence. He wants you to live free from violence in peace and tranquility. There is a way out. You're not trapped. It's not your fault. Abuse is not love. And most of all, I really want you to know that you are not alone. If you're a victim of violence, please reach out to somebody today. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, call 911 for help. If you know of a senior suffering violence, please tell the authorities. In our next episode, we're going to talk about risk and preventative factors in abuse of seniors. Until then, God bless you.